Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on the Calibre Gun Cricket 2 Tactical. In this video we're going to be rebuilding the rifle. Now in the previous one we took it apart and I said we'd be having a look through it to see what little improvements we can make. I've come up with a couple so I'll point them out as we walk through the reassembly process. We're going to be starting off with the back block here and the first little difference I want to point out is the new hammer. So this is my new hammer and this one is the old one. As you can see there, there are some subtle differences. Firstly, the new hammer is significantly lighter than the old one, as well as the pip on the end is longer. So we've got a longer, lighter hammer. I'll explain why we did that very shortly, and to compensate for the new lightened hammer and shortened stroke, we needed to use a new spring. This one is a little stiffer than the original one. This particular spring is out of a 3.5 barrel kit for an FX impact. I've cut maybe one or two coils off it, and we've also dressed the ends. The lightened hammer and stiffer spring has improved the efficiency of the rifle a little bit. Before we did the modification from a 200 bar fill, was getting around 260 to 270 shots. With the new hammer and spring combo, we've bumped that up to just over 300. We're getting sort of between 300 and 310 shots per fill now. We could have improved the efficiency a little more by using a hammer with a longer stroke on it, but as I wanted the benefits of the short stroked hammer, we sacrificed a little bit of efficiency for a nicer action. A short stroked hammer means the hammer has to travel less distance as we pull the trigger. This improves the lock time and improves the feel of the rifle. The rifle wasn't bad before, but it does feel better and snappier with the new components. I've also made some little spring guides here and a new cocking indicator for the back, so it's blue to go with our stock rather than the red it was before. With all that said though, it does go in the same way. So if we take our block here, we can slide our hammer in from the back. Then whilst lining up the hole in the side with the little cutout slot, we can screw our pin in. Going to get that done up nice and tight using a set of parallel pliers. With that in, we can push the hammer forward. We may need to pull the trigger to allow the hammer to fly forward. Add our spring to the back. Add the second PTFE washer. And then add our hammer spring adjuster to the back of that. I'm going to get that in done into about there for now and we can readjust the power at a later date. The next thing we'll do is add the locking screw and then do that in slightly with a 3mm allen key, leaving it loose for now as we will need to readjust the hammer spring later. Up next we'll add the pellet probe. Before that goes in we are just going to add a small amount of lithium grease to the pellet probe itself. So a small amount to the pellet probe itself just a slight smear will do us, we don't need loads on this component. And then before that goes in, we'll also add a small amount to the inside of the block, so just in here. Again, we only want a small amount, as we don't want the grease to work its way around the block and cause issue with our hammer and hammer spring assembly. We need to get the pellet probe orientated with this hole in the side lined up with the cutout in the block. Then push it through the barrel holder, getting it pushed back. Then we can line the hole up with the cocking arm, pushing our little pin through and getting that all secured like so. Next we'll put in the small indexing module and before that goes in we will just add a small amount of grease to all the moving parts. So we have the hole here which this rod runs in and out of. Next we're going to take this piece here which is our magazine catch. So this piece here allows us to take the magazine in and out of the rifle. Get that lined up like so. Then we'll push this pin through the two pieces and secure them together. Next we can take this and then just drop it into the block. Hook in the small arm there under the cocking lever. Making sure everything lines up nicely as we push it in. So there we have it. We have already installed the small screw so this one here this one just acts as an indexing pin so that we can move this lever into the set positions so we have three on there that's already been installed and if we take a look at the block here we do have to 
hook it over this pin which wasn't taken out in the disassembly. With that done we can get that secured with this screw here, tightening it up using a 2.5mm allen key. Next up we're going to take our magazine indexing arm, this piece here. This does have a small spacer washer on the back so just be careful of that. I'm going to add a small amount of lithium grease to this side, add our washer, and then another small amount of lithium grease over that. You don't want tons of this stuff, just a small amount will do us. And then we can always wipe off the excess so we're not caked in grease or anything like that. With that done, this piece needs to go over this pin here, the one I'm pointing to with my thumb, and also hook in on the back, like so. It's a lot easier to do that when the rifle is cocked like it is now. After that, we can decock the rifle. And then, using a set of tweezers, we can get this spring hooked over this pin here. So, this spring hooked over this pin here. With that done, we can take this piece here, which was one of our cocking linkages, and get that installed through the pellet probe. Like so, securing that with the small screw, which is this countersunk one here. And getting that done up using a 2mm Allen key. Here we have it. With that done, we can carefully decock the rifle and then get the cover plate put over. And we're gonna secure that using the four screws. So these three here are just standard small screws, these ones, and then the final one, which is this one over here, is the longer one. We're gonna get those done up with a T6 Torx bit. The last thing we'll add is the ball detent for the pellet probe. And again, before that goes in, we're just gonna add a small amount of grease to this slot here. And we can take our small wall bearing, put that in the hole, get that covered over with this piece of sprung steel here. And then get that secured using the small screw and the T6 Torx bit. Then we can just wipe away the excess grease with a small cotton bud. And there we have it, there's the rear block fully complete. We've got more things to add to it later on, but for now it's complete. It does look much more complicated than it actually is. Once you get in there and see how the things work, it can really only go together one way. But under normal conditions, you should really never need to service this back block, as from the factory it was adequately greased. There's really not a lot of improvements we can make in the back here. The only thing that we installed off camera was the small magazine detent, so this piece here. Although that's a real nice simple job, the plunger goes in first, the spring goes behind that, then it's capped off with a small grub screw. I like the grub screw pretty much flush with the block, but you can experiment around with tension, and that will slightly change how the magazine rotates. Before we move on with the rebuild, there's just two more things that I want to mention, and that's in regards to these two screws here. The first one is a trigger weight adjustment, and screwing the screw in, so clockwise, increases the trigger weight. Screwing it out decreases the trigger weight. Now, there's a caveat to all trigger adjustments in that they have to be adjusted incrementally and very carefully. If you don't know what you're doing, you can make a trigger very dangerous as it will go off without warning or can go off without warning, I should say. So just either leave it at the factory setting or do incredibly small adjustments one at a time until you get the trigger adjustment that you require. But the front one here is trigger weight. The back one here is sear engagement. So the front one is adjusted with a two and a half mil Allen key. The back one is adjusted with a two mil Allen key. If we take a look at that, screwing in increases sear engagement. So as you can see here, we have one sear at the front, the other at the back. Screwing this screw in allows the forward one to move further in. So in effect, the sear allows it to rotate further around, causing us to have a longer second stage. Now you want a nice short second stage, but it doesn't want to be dangerous. So we're gonna adjust that out slightly until we get a very small amount of sear engagement. 
but not enough or not small enough so that it's dangerous. So just a tad more. And there we have it. It's a very nice trigger at the moment with a small amount of sear engagement, but enough not to have the rifle go off without warning. With that said, we'll put the block to one side and start work on the air cylinder. Right then, starting off with the air cylinder, the first thing we're going to do is reassemble the regulator. Now, before we begin, if you need any of the O-ring sizes, they are available on Calibre Gun's website, so I'm not going to be going over them in the video. First thing we're going to do is take our O-ring here, add a small amount of silicon grease to that, then drop it in the regulator housing. Next, we're going to get that pushed down using some tweezers making sure it's nice and seated at the bottom. Then we're going to take our small brass captive nut, then do that in using a flat bladed screwdriver. This nut doesn't need to be done up tight, it just needs to be touching the o-ring. The main purpose of this nut is to stop the o-ring riding up the threads. Next up we'll add the reg piston. So the Belleville washers have already been stacked on the piston, the Belleville washers have been polished off camera and given a good coating of dry lube. The dry lube, as the name suggests, is a dry lubricant. I prefer dry lubricant in my Belleville washers as I don't like the idea of grease getting trapped between the washers and impeding their performance. In the grand scheme of things, you could probably use whatever you like, but I like to use dry lube and I've never had a problem with it. But this is the stuff here. So dry lube, it's a powder. It's a molly powder, so it's incredibly slippery, but the one thing I will say is it does get everywhere. So if you're adding dry lube to something, make sure you put sort of a paper towel down first, which is why I did it off camera. But there we go. So we'll add a small amount of silicon grease to this O-ring at the base, and then we'll get the piston installed into the rig body. Like so. Then we can add the snap ring to the base. To do that, I'm just going to be using a set of snap ring pliers, getting the ring in place, then making sure it's pushed down into the recess. There we have it. The last thing we'll do is add the adjuster screw. So this piece here has been polished off camera, and we also did polish the tip of the rig piston. These two pieces seal on one another, so they need to be a nice smooth surface for the seal to work effectively. But we can just get that screwed into the top and then use something like an allen key shaft to get that screwed in. In the disassembly video I did encourage you to take a measurement from the top of the reg body to the top of the adjuster screw so it's nice and easy to set the regulator back to that before you actually pressurise the rifle. I did however just make myself a regulator tester so I'm going to set my reg pressure just very quickly off camera. Right then, and there we have it, the regulator is set to just over 80 bar. I do expect that to drop slightly as the regulator beds in. So 80.8 will be fine for now. Next we'll bring back the air cylinder components. Right then, so first thing we'll do is get the gauge installed. So I'm replacing the original gauge with one of these small digital ones. They look a little nicer if I'm honest, they're black, they're a little smaller. So we'll add a small amount of silicon grease to this o-ring here. You can stick that in the block like so. And then making sure it's seated. Then we can add our gauge to the top of that. Next I'm going to take a good quality adjustable spanner and just tighten that down. Being nice and careful not to scratch the edges of the anodized aluminium. Right then, and there's the gauge tightened up. If we turn it on there, you can see the nice clear pressure reading. Next thing we'll do is get the bottle screwed on. Before that goes on, we'll just take this O-ring here, add a small amount of silicon grease to it, get that lined up with the counter bore in the top of the bottle there, push that down, make sure it's seated, and then we can screw that onto the front of this little adapter here. As I said in the disassembly video, this is just a name 18 by 1.5, so you can just screw a standard bottle on if you wanted a bigger one or maybe a smaller one. Then we can screw this piece into our cylinder. Again, small amount of silicon grease around this o-ring here. 
and we'll take our solder and look out for the small drill holes in it. So the end with the two drill holes close together needs to be at the regulated end and this end over here is our bottle pressure end or our bottle side should I say. And now we'll do that up so that the brief holes are lined up with the bottom. So that orientation. So we see a little brief hole there lined up with the bottom of the block. Right then, with that done, we'll concentrate on the valve housing. Now from factory, the rifle was fitted with a number of plenum restricting plugs. So these pieces here. This one was in the valve housing, like so. And then this one ran through the spacers used to space the regulator out correctly. Both of which we're not going to be using in the reassembly process. So we're not going to be using one in the valve housing. Although I have made a modified one. So this one is pretty much identical to the one you just saw, just with a bigger hole for it. Now, plenum plugs limit your potential power. Obviously, this is a sub 12 foot pound rifle and we are still obeying by the sub 12 foot pound rule. However, with my new modified plug and the original ones taken out, the rifle does run a little more efficiently. But that's the reason I'm taking my ones out, but you can do whatever you want with your rifle. But to begin with, we're going to take our valve housing, put our valve and valve spring back in the bottom there, then take our adjuster screw and get that screwed in. Now in the disassembly video, I did urge you to take a measurement of your valve spring. So how far or the distance between the top of the housing here and your adjuster. So you can reset your valve to what it was before you took it apart. I've got my measurement written down. And on my rifle, it's about 5.75 millimeters. But with that done, we'll take our regulator, put some silicon grease around the O-rings, and then get that installed into the cylinder. And we're just going to be pushing it in the end for now, pushing it past the threads, and then taking our spacer, putting that in, putting our plug in, and then screw in our valve housing. Before this goes in though, I will just add a small amount of silicon grease to this O-ring here. Once that's done, I'm just gonna make sure that this grub screw is tight. This grub screw is our bleed grub screw. So as we are filling the rifle back up with air shortly, we wanna make sure that this is done in. The other thing that you want to do is roughly align the air cylinder with the bottom here. So this section here, these cutouts need to be aligned with the bottom. So this piece here. With that done though, we'll put that to one side and start work on the middle of the rifle. Right then, next up we'll get started on the midsection of the rifle. First thing we'll do is take our barrel and stick that through these two blocks here. Just loosely for now, as we're only using the barrel for alignment purposes. Next, we're going to take a 3mm Allen key and just slightly do in these screws here. Just until we feel a small amount of resistance on the barrel there. So that one's nice and still able to be moved, but you can feel it's snugging up on the barrel. Same with this one here. There we go. Next we'll take our scope rail and get that laid on the top. Now you'll notice that the screws are two different lengths. We have a long one at the front and a short one at the back. So you need to make sure that that's around the right way. And get that pushed on. Then we'll do these two screws up here nice and tight using a 3mm Allen key. The scope rail does have alignment pins which line up the scope rail with these two blocks here. So just make sure that that's aligned. Then we can tighten the two screws up nice and tight. At this stage, we'll make sure that the barrel still slides in and out nice and freely, which it does. Now we can slide the barrel out. And take our cocking linkage, this piece here, add a small amount of grease to the inside of this piece here. Just a small amount will do us. We'll also take this spring here and just add a tiny amount of grease to it, just so it doesn't go rusty. Like so. 
We'll put the spring over the barrel. Push the barrel through the spring. And then we'll do the same for this piece here. Next up, we can just wipe the excess grease off the end of the barrel. Then we can take this rod here, add a small amount of lithium grease to the rod itself. Just a small amount will do us. And we'll also add a little bit to this hole here. Next, we'll push the rod through and then screw the rod into our cocking linkage. What we're going to do for now is screw it all the way in, although we will be adjusting this very shortly. Next up, we'll take our trigger assembly, this piece here, get that installed onto the bottom, then secure that using the four screws. Before I put the last one in, I'll just give you a close up of the screw there. And we're doing those up nice and tightly using a two millimeter Allen key. Next up, while we're on this side, we'll add the cover piece. So this piece here. Secure that using the four screws, getting those done up nice and tightly with a T10 Torx bit. Next up, we'll install the cocking arm. I will say that the cocking arm can be installed on either side. So I always install my cocking arms on the right hand side, but you could put it on the left if you wanted to. Back section of the cocking arm is secured on with these countersunk screws here. Getting those secured with a two and a half mil Allen key. And then we can install the middle screw. And that's done using a T20 Torx bit. We're going to be leaving off the cover piece, so the cover plate for this side for now, as we will need to access these screws at a later date. With that all done, what we can do is start bringing back the sub-assemblies and start getting everything put back together. The first thing we need to do is take our back block here, install the two grub screws like so, but then back them out so that we have easy access to the slot in the middle. Next, what we're going to do is put the block in, and then hook the cocking linkage into that piece there. What we'll do now is bring back our tape and measure from the front edge of this piece here to the back edge of our cocking shuttle. So the distance that we measured in the disassembly video. On my rifle, this turned out to be about 26.3 millimeters or centimeters, I should say 26.3 centimeters, which this one is roughly set about there now. Next thing what we can do is take a 1.5mm Allen key, just tighten up that grub screw at the back there. And that will stop the rod rotating on us. Next up, I'm going to gently rotate the barrel until the transfer port is exposed. Then we can align that with the bottom of the block and push that into the back block there. There we have it, push it until it stops. With that done, we can move the whole assembly forward slightly and then bring back the air cylinder. So we're gonna flip the block on its end, like so. Then very carefully take our air cylinder and feed that through the block. At this stage, we need to make sure that the back here, so we see this flat on the air cylinder is aligned with the bottom and that flat there has got to line up with this back hole so this back hole in the back block there. So we'll push that into place. At the moment, because we have the hammer spring installed, we're gonna just wind out the hammer spring adjusting cap and leave that off for now. That'll just make it a little easier to maneuver. Then we're gonna take our two securing grub screws. So these two here with the air tube aligned at the back. We're gonna take the first one Put that in the back, and as you do that up, just make sure that the air cylinder is aligned properly and pushed all the way home. I'm happy there, we'll do that up nice and tight. Then we'll take the other grub screw and install that in the forward hole. 
Next up, we're going to slide the air cylinder back and line everything up at the front there. So the air cylinder hooks into this little peg at the front here, like so. Next, what we're going to do is just pull the front block and the air cylinder together. So inside the trigger linkage there, just put our thumb and our finger on that. And then do these grub screws or these screws up nice and tightly with a three millimeter Allen key. With that done, I'm going to screw the hammer spring adjuster lightly onto the back again, just so it doesn't get lost. And we're also going to attach the trigger linkage again. That's easy as done with just a nice wide flat bladed screwdriver. Split the linkage and then push the pin through these little triggers here at the back there. If you're finding that you can't push your cocking arm all the way home, so if it gets to about there, then seems to feel like it's going to stop. What you need to do is lengthen this rod at the top. But my one opens and closes without any issue whatsoever, so my one's fine. What we're going to do now is flip the rifle on its side and then do up the other locking grub screw at the back here. Again, using a 1.5mm Allen key. At this stage, we can decock the rifle or make sure it's not cocked. What we're going to do at this stage is pressurise the rifle. When we pressurise the rifle, this air cylinder will actually grow slightly. And when it does that, it may pull the barrel forward slightly. Now, there's nothing to worry about. If it does that, what we'll do is just loosen these three screws off, push the barrel back home, and then retighten the screws. So I'll do that very quickly off camera. Right then, so I've pressurised the rifle up, pushed the barrel back into the block, and if we take a look at the back section here, the barrel is now flush with this back section. So if your barrel's forward slightly, just loosen off them grub screws or them screws, push the barrel back and you should be fine. The other thing I've done very quickly is set the power so everything's ready to go back together. So we'll just get the final things installed on the rifle. First thing we'll do is install the little Picatinny rail at the bottom. So to do that, we're just going to put the Picatinny rail on and then do the screw up using a 3mm Allen key. As you do that up, just make sure that the pick rail isn't misaligned with the block you can get it off next we'll put the grip on so putting the grip on nice and easy drop it into position then do the screw up using a five millimeter allen key same with the back piece here just slide that into position so to put the back piece on we need to drop it on the back and then push it forward to align it with these two dowels down the bottom here Turn that up nice and tight. Next up, we'll put the cheek piece on and they're secured using two screws. Final thing we'll do is put the cover over this side. So to do that, we'll just lift the cocking arm up, hook the plate over, and then install the four securing screws. With that all said, that's pretty much going to do it for this one. Some of you may be happy to hear that the next video is going to be on the BRK Ghost. Crawley Surplus Store has finally given us the call. They've managed to secure a long 177 rifle and we're going to be picking it up on Monday. So the next video is going to be the overview on the Ghost, but we're not going to be abandoning the cricket. What I'm going to do is run the two rifles parallel with each other. So one video or one week will be a video on the cricket. The next will be a video on the Ghost. But for now guys, that's going to about do it for this one. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.